Hello and welcome back to Culture Simulator with me, Barden. Okay, so we're going to give that one another go. And as I said before, our last time, if if we need to boost some of the guys' abilities, we're going to um, start going to some of this these ones here and trying to get some artifacts that can help us to that we can use as tools. Okay, so work is done. I'll grab that there, but yeah, I I would imagine, um, I'd imagine given what happened last time, people are probably a little bit on edge in in the cult. Probably a lot of rumors flying about, you know. Um, we've had, we've kind of had like again, it's only head cannon, but um, let's go it anyway. We've had. A had a few instances where you know we felt like we were getting on top of the of the factions that are there in the cult of of people kind of um not everyone pulling in the same direction and stuff like that and having you know established committees and mixed and match people on our expeditions and things we thought maybe we gotten over the hump on that but now you know we've had we've had a few um failed expeditions we've had now for injuries on one of the failed ones as well you know and those divisions are beginning to come back again i would feel that people are there's a lot of fingers being pointed and you know things are not looking good and we really need to provide some success to head off any kind of um uh, anything escalating really but let's see here purchase a tincture of opium in times of special crisis i might visit a discreet pharmacist to purchase a tincture of opium and make my dreams sweet only in times of a special crisis let's do that work wise get back there good okay So we sent our two lantern people first. That's what we need for the first one as well. So we should be good on that. I've given my agents the opportunity to serve. Let's hope it ends well for us. Okay. So next is going to be the fighting. So we're going to send Elridge along. So we haven't gotten by the first bit yet, but we have sent um, 10. We have sent the equivalent of 10 um edge so now enid has um the wound is healed but this one came very close to death silence has touched them like snow yeah so imagine enid came back um people could see you know in her eyes she kind of now and again staring off and thinking back to what occurred there and being a lot quieter than she was before you know, it hasn't really, like, we may have felt that, like, her coming back and showing people, listen, she's healed now. It's a time for, not perhaps celebration, but certainly a time to, to realize that we were lucky and to move on. But um, it's not quite worked out that way. People have been, you know, people who we thought would, would be on our side, the likes of um, Violet, um have been looking at her and thinking and it's not quite right um something major happened on that expedition and then the likes of Rhaenyra um has probably been making hay with that as well um and you know maybe trying to win those close to Violet um over to her faction as well um, and then all the while, Rose is there watching and plotting and seeing which which way the wind is blowing and where sh she would like to um, place herself at the moment. But for now, she's not kind of showing her cards. She's not declaring herself for either side. But you can be sure that she, she if there's anyone who's well informed about what's going on, 
within all of these different fractions, it's going to be rows. Right, so here we have read the irreproachable traditions of the Society of the, no of the Noble Endeavour. Partridge claims to have identified consistent features among those who ascend. All of them had passed the stag door and were accounted, counted known. All of them spoke the Caladate invocation or a greater right at the start of their ascension. And all of them were rich. Okay, so um, an ardent... An ardent um, orison. Okay, so we've got that. And that's kind of nice there. We're going to be able to then get some forge up to up to a decent level now, so that's good. So study-wise, then we have you. The proverbial footloose gathers travelers in a wood and leads them through, but abandons them part way. They find themselves beset by glorious monsters. Okay, the serenity of the black wood. An allegorical history of the House of Leth, who it is here implied were inspired by the centipede Sereno Blackwood in an occult alias to this day. Okay, is an occult alias to this day. Okay. It's, um, so, we need, we probably need to get another one of these. Yeah, so let's get working on that. So generally I wouldn't I wouldn't um dream now to get another one because we got one sitting there, but I'm very, very worried about the fact that um we have two dread in there, we have another one there. So I don't mind being less than efficient with that, because I would rather be less than efficient and cling on to the situation. As opposed to um, as opposed to losing our run. Now, <laughs> it just so happens that we're going to get a third um, contentment from. The, well, actually, it's going to be second because it's going to come before this one. But we're going to end up with three, um, and probably only one of those three will be used. But that's okay. And then this here as well um, actually captured the dread, so we don't even need to worry about the third one. Right, so here the watchman will clear our sight so that we can almost certainly pass with an error. Okay, good. Now, uh, we have 10 lantern, we have 5. Okay, so Victor is going to go give us 10 edge. I'm going to run things on. Some days are better than others. Sometimes the sky is nothing like a filthy sheet. Sometimes the river runs clear. Okay, so we get a new one there. Work this done. Oh, that deep piece, but I should not do this again. Grab you. You're going to be around by the time it's looking again, which is good. We're now going to head back into the Mantis up in our... Um, is it? It's health, right? Yeah. Here we go. Okay, run things on. So at this point, I would imagine that um, the cult has grown to the point where we're not even being um, discreet about what we're doing anymore. And yeah, with, with all of this tension that's going on as well, it's lucky because otherwise... Um, probably would be attracting more attention more attention to ourselves than we really need to um, but imagine that we kind of moved a little bit away from you know conducting our business in the church and it's more um i would imagine that the church is more for kind of formal occasions that you know when when we do certain rites and stuff we're using the church but other than that um, because we have these factions of people that have broken off, we probably have a situation where um, there are other locations now where where a lot of this stuff is going on, a lot of meetings are happening. Um, 
you know, it could be in maybe probably the local pub uh, would be one, probably some kind of uh, community hall. There's probably a club as well there that we have taken over um, pretty much and using private rooms in there. And, you know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's not getting as noticed as it was at the start, because I think our, our people have become more circumspect and kind of more savvy to, you know, to the members of the, of the parish council and just making sure that they don't know what, what our business is as much as possible. Um, but still, you know, we're still worried about what what is actually going on in the cult, but it's harder for Father Ted to keep an eye on things now because um, so he's kind of swapped one problem for another. You know, gotten rid of the problem of the for the most part of of the members of the parish council obviously um, noticing what is going on, but then swapped that for the fact that now. Um, it's very hard for Father Ted to, to know what's going on. So I would imagine at this stage, he's probably looking to have a heart to heart with Rose and just lay things out and say, listen, Rose, here's the situation. So I'm really worried about the cult and. I know that um, we've been friends now for a very long time. And I also know that we don't always align, or like our goals don't always align in terms of, of the cult itself. But let me just be, let me just be frank with you. Okay. Uh, we maybe both want different things at the cult and wanted to go in a different direction. But I don't think either of us wants the cult to disintegrate and end and I'm really worried that that's going to happen and I need you to be completely honest with me and to tell me you know will you work with me to try and repair the fractures that are there in the cult and Rose probably will sit there for a few minutes contemplating what we've had to say And then she'd probably say to Father Ted something along the lines of Ted, we have been friends for a long time and it, it hurts me that you think that in any way I would want for what we have built together to to just be thrown away by by petty infighting. But at the same time, you have to understand my position. We form this cult together, but as far as I see, it is serving your purposes more than it's mine. And that's not something that sits well with me. And if I do help you to realign things, then you're going to have to remember that you owe me one. I'm not doing it just because, just because I want the cult to survive. I do, but still, I want it to again to be our cult and not your cult. And I imagine Ted, in his desperation, would agree to support that, not knowing what Rose may have up her sleeve for the future. And that's where we leave their little discussion for now, I think. Right, so here we have the Serenity of the Blackwood. The travelers discover they can survive if if they close their eyes. They adopt a closed eye as their sign and that they can go unnoticed if they drink from the clear, clear cold streams. They never forget their proverbial footloose, the centipede, but they never forgive either. Okay, so we get some fascination out of that. Pop you up there. I'm going to sneeze. It's coming. Yeah, I can hear it. Or I can feel it, I should say. 
Um, so you go there, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, there, sorry. Uh, yeah, right. So that's, oh no, you go down there. So what are we missing there then? Uh, winter. Yeah, our winter lore is what we're missing. Okay. Now, um, everything's been translated. We're not going to translate that because we already have um, Scholar of Fusine. So that is going to be sold when we can. We're going to run on the clock. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. So Cat now has got into trouble. That means we need to send another... Um, another... Person Slee, maybe? Yeah, let's send Slee. So at the first hurdle this time, we're in trouble. This is not going to go well. So, probably very lucky that we had that chat with Rose. Because otherwise, this could have been the straw that brought the cams back, where everybody said, listen, um, we used to have something, but now, now we just seems like an exercise in futility this is you know another person has got injured and there doesn't seem to be any care or responsibility coming from the top so cat now we're gonna have to heal it's lucky now with every, everybody now you know rumors have gone around about someone has got injured again and People are wondering, oh, who was it? Like, who who went on, who went on the expedition? Um, and then there's speculation about, you know, who could be, and what that also means for the cult. But Rose would be there, calming people down and saying, "Listen, this cult is not some kind of jolly." It's it's not somewhere to come and play. This is serious business. You know, if if you want to go dabble in in the occult, then you know, go see a um go see a psychic or go get your tarot read or something like that. But here things we deal with the real occult here. And that's a dangerous thing. And if you're not willing to take that risk, then you shouldn't be here. And calling their bluff, she knows that they're they're gonna they're gonna stay because they've seen enough to know that it is real. And they all have their own desires and their own wants, which they feel will be fulfilled through the occult. And at this point, I don't think any of them really want to leave what is still an established cult and leave the position that they have in the cult. So Rose's words has, have probably saved the cult and saved Father Dead. But for how long is the question? Okay, so that is going to be resolved now. That's good. Let's see what happens there, though. Is it going to be just another... Oh, unlucky people. Wait. The watchman will clear our sight so that we can almost certainly pass without error. Well, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. Now. So, Rose. So we're going to have a... We've had a chat with Rose. Rose has talked to, to the others and maybe one or two said to her, that's easy enough for you to say, you know, um, and maybe there are a couple of skeptics and Rose will, Rose has showed them the scar that she bears from her previous um, sacrifice for the cult and then to say I'm going to prove to you 
I'm going to go and join them. And I'm going to do my best to lead them through. This is the third time. And third time we've gone there and failed every time. I'm going to go and give it my all. And if I get injured, so be it. As I said, that's the risk we take. And if it turns out that we fail, well then, what it means is we weren't prepared properly. And some of that preparation goes on you guys. You've all got a part to play. Whether the equipment was wrong, whether the information about the place was wrong, whether even the people didn't feel like they had your support. Whatever it is, if you're not pulling 100% behind everyone here when they go out to represent us, then you share a part of the blame. So, if it turns out that this is just too difficult for us, we've got to, to accept that. We need to make sure that the next time that we go to a place like that, we're better prepared. And the only way to do that is to get ourselves some more tools. So, whatever happens here, there's going to be more work for you guys. You're going to have to recommit yourself to the cult. You can't just sit there pointing fingers and blaming people. If we fail this time, we're going to succeed next time. But only if all of you do your jobs. And with that, she departs and heads to join the expedition. Okay, so we're going to go to the Lodge. Fascination. Oh, would have loved that one, but anyway. Last night, the billowing blue of the Lodge of the Sage Knight, I sat on velvet cushions and watched two dead contend with shining swords. They came with the place, said the woman, who rules here now. The one who once called herself Galmier. I was not the Sage Knight, if that's what you're wondering. He went higher in the mountains, long before I came here. My attention has drifted. The swords sparkle like falling water. The dead move like dancers. Okay. So interestingly, we have two fascination. Oops. Let's pop you up there. Now, um, I pause because I want to make sure that we keep on top of our work. Right, and we run things on. Head back to the Mantis again. We're mud splattered and thorn scratch, but we've made it through. Okay, good. So we made it through one section. He's now on the lookout. The wound is healed as much as it will ever be. A gate of pain and possibility remains. Okay, so we've got Cat there. So Cat now has her wound as well. So she came back to the cult and people were talking, uh, you know, people were talking about what what's happening at that place asking her he said listen i made a mistake i wanted the more experienced people here but i made a mistake and that's why i got injured okay now supplies are low okay so we're going to send another person we are going to send, I think, some with Forge. So let's send Laidlaw along. Move the spare prowls elsewhere. And Kat's declaration or admission that she made a mistake um, does placate some of those people who are still skeptical, even after Rose's um, speech before she left. For now, Things have calmed down, but 
you've got to remember got to remember that there's there are no there are no guarantees with this and things can change very quickly as we've seen let's grab this one Men of the dead enter the mansions through the white door. They wander its corridors in silence until they are lost. Some embrace each other. Some devour each other. Some forced away into the dreams of the living. A few record their memories on the mantis stone where it is soft. They scratch it with their nails, you see. Last night I read one of those memories. Okay, so we've got that. We're then going to head straight back to the mantis. Okay, our work is done. So we're going to keep on keeping on with that. Now, study-wise, there are a lot of combinations we can do here, so let's start with this one. So, to do it, erudition, okay. So, let's get start getting some, oops, let's start getting some erudition on the go there. Uh-oh, back again. We can try again when the dust is settled. Okay. So yeah, everyone comes back. There's kind of a... I imagine a... The mood is one of resignation. Everybody thinking, listen, we've tried. We can't, whatever it is, we just can't succeed there. So, what we decide then is... We're going to go to Gwyr Inn. On a crumbling cliff above a grey sea, the Gwyr Inn squats until the day the sea comes for it. It receives few guests, fewer since the owner closed in his notorious library to visiting scholars. And we say, listen. Maybe. Maybe we do need to prepare. And now. Father Ted has called everyone together for a meeting. And says, we're going on another expedition, but we're not going back to that place. And we're not going back to that place for a good long while. I need each of you, and I mean each of you. I need each of you to, over the next while, put everything you can into this. We're looking for anything that can give us an edge there. Be that a tool, be that lore, or be that your own performance. Every little piece will count. And with that, he turns to Enid and says, Enid, I know you were injured last time, but I'd like you to go on this next expedition. Cat. I know you too were injured. But. I'd like you to go as well. Okay. And with that. Everyone just kind of drifts off. Um, Cat is not quite sure. If his message has hit home with people. But he's hoping that providing some some wins, as it were, or some success will renew people's enthusiasm. Because you can see that a lot of people there who not necessarily are on the verge of quitting, but for them, quitting may be the easier option at the minute. And maybe one or two are thinking that if somebody else quit first then they would probably follow them but for now there isn't that first quitter and we're going to try to ensure that there isn't going to be one so we give the guys the details of the Guir Inn we um so let's see we can reserve rooms at the inn easily enough, but we can expect the locals, if they divine our intentions, to turn nasty 
And if the library is still there, it will be well hidden. Okay. Just so gonna send those two along. And then we will we will take Rose aside and we say, listen, Rose, I appreciate your efforts last time. Um It's a pity that we couldn't get what we needed from that other expedition, but you still you still did a good job for us, but I'm going to send Elridge and Victor on this next one, but I want to give you a heads up. It's not a slight on you. It's just I feel I need you more here, keeping an eye on things. And Rose nods and agrees that she would be more useful here for the moment. But she does say to us that she wants to be involved on at least one expedition in the near future. So if that can be arranged, she'd be happy about that. So let's see what we have here. The expedition plans for the next challenge. Consume funds. Okay, so the next one is forge or knock. Um, we have plenty of knocks, so now we're going to send Elridge along for the one after that. He's on the lookout, but if he'd been looking more closely, he would realize that there really isn't anything for him to, to look for. So we're going to go for the orchard. The invisible arts, Crystal Lopley is said to have remarked, are as profitable as Macram, as ethical as tobacco smuggling, and in general as beneficial as roulette. Still, there is always the Orchard of Lights. And indeed, the orchard, with its glowing fruit and its peaceful mists, is a place to be yearned for. Last night I walked there in the peaceful hours of the deep night. Even after waking, I still carry with me Little of the glory of the old sun. Grab those. Oops. Uh, you can go up there. We now have that as well. So let's get those two together. Start that. Put our erudition there. And run things on. Good. Now I'm going to send you as well. The Watchers will almost certainly regret standing against us. They certainly will. Oops. Okay, so you we need to deal with if we can. But the minute we... Uh, actually, the minute we can certainly do it. In times of a special crisis, I might visit the discreet pharmacist to purchase a tincture of opium and make my dream sweet, but only in times of a special crisis. Okay, so let's do that. Their blood pumps bright, then dark. They should not have opposed us. We move on. I imagine some of, some of the cult are probably waiting on news from the inn. Some probably expecting another disaster, another injury, but nothing has come. So at the moment, you know, no news is good news, as they say. We have to provide our erudition there. We'll do that and run things on. Oh, that deep piece, but I should not do this again. So we call a few of the people together and we say, listen, things are actually going well for once on this expedition. And if anybody would like to volunteer, you're more than welcome to go. And to our surprise, the first person to put a hand up is Saliba. We say, okay, you can go along. And we let him go. We know he's got some kind of ulterior motive to do it, but we also know that he does carry some weight with some of the younger crowd who, who look up to him. 
I'm safe for now and reality is not enough evidence to bring a case against me and I've found no new clues. We bear a great power of opening. We'll almost certainly shatter this door. Okay. You say, listen, Neville. You go there as well. And it kind of sends out the message to everyone. We've sent... The two highest ranking members of the cult. Apart from Father Ted himself. To this. This is important. They may not be the most, the two most powerful members of the cult. That resides with, you know, the likes of Rose and Rhaenyra and Valsine and Kat. But still, it is significant. Okay, so here we need to have rarefied mind skill, which we don't have because you have you, right? Um, so we then have to provide fascination, which we have. Woohoo! There we go. That's nice. Okay, and run things on. Go of despair prowls elsewhere. Right there. All doors must open and as all lives must end, this door has found its end here today. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to send somebody else along. So at this point, we have too many people looking to go. But Tristan has said that he'd like to go, so we send him. He was maybe um so yeah, maybe you know not the most powerful member of the cult, but certainly someone who whose determination can be a can be an example to others. Especially those who are maybe wavering and were thinking of, of packing it in. The room is bleached and quiet. The chairs are pale wood. The table is topped with white marble. A low draft blows through the ill-fitted sea-facing casement. In winter, it must be insupportably cold. A white painted glass case holds a shelf of books, wrapped oddly in coils of copper wire. As we receive news that it seems the guys have been successful, we call Leo aside. Say, Leo, we have good news from our expedition. Leo begins to um, express how glad he is, but we stop him. Father Ted says, Time for celebration is later. For now, Leo, what I need you to do is I need to go and check that the tracks have been covered properly. And if you find anything, I need you to make sure that nobody else is going to find it. Leo nods and says, leave it to me. And off he sets. Unfortunately for Leo, something he may not have known is that the detective was possibly beating him, beating him to it.
Some of the books are exotic 18th century pornography. Others are botanist journal. Some, however, have value for our studies. A yellowing note tucked into the spine of one reads, Watch for me, JC. Okay, and we have our books there. I've increased my mastery of the glorious lore, which we call by its aspect, Lantern. Okay, so we have our Lantern lore there. Okay. Now, so we have Fascination and Dread there. We have all of these books. So the first one, Gilder Sleeves, Latin Grammar. You can go over there because it's one that we're going to sell. Next book is On Matthias and the Amethyst Imago Loss. The diagrams and illustrations, even across centuries, are elegant, hypnotic, occasionally ex erotic in, in Aramaic. Okay. So you can go up there and there. Next one, the Shaven Lock Tantra. Also known as the one who has shaven his hair. This, the story goes, is the lore that even the shape, the shape changing Vanarus rejected. Okay, and you are written in Sanskrit. Okay, so you can go, oops, you can go there. Those Who Do Not Sleep, a Fusine text attributed to the mystic Brodnax. Okay, I'll be there. And then one more. The Concursum Diaries, the diaries of the explorer and murderer Lars Westergren. He's unhealthily translated them into Frisian for privacy. Okay, so then that can go down there. Right, good. Okay, now we're going to, um, let's pop you up there, but we're going to wait to see what comes of this. Is he able to convert it to evidence? So we got called out to the inn. They told him that some people books, booked some rooms and then They left in the morning, but some stuff was missing. Detective takes descriptions of those people and compares them to the notes he already has. Thinking that maybe some of them are related to our cult. Many of the dead enter the mansions through the white door. They wander its corridors in silence until they are lost. Some embrace each other, some devour each other. Some force their ways into the dreams of the living. A few record their memories on the Mansa stone, where it is soft. They scratch it with their nails, you see. Last night I read one of those memories. Okay, so we've got another one of those. How many of those do we have now? Actually hard to see. Is it 24? It's 34. Wow, that is a lot. Okay, um, work's done. Go to slot again. Keep going with that. Okay. Study wise, we probably want to combine these two next. So that is going to need erudition again. Let's, oops. Well, I guess you can stay there now. Let's pop you in there. Start that up. We want to see what happens here. I'm certain that my adversary has lodged a case, a copy of their notes elsewhere, sorry, with their sister, with their supervisor, or even with a contact in the press. This is troubling. Okay. And as you hear that, um, we ask someone to go fetch Leo and tell him, listen, Leo, uh, we appreciate your efforts, but apparently it's, we acted too late. And that's on me, not on you. Um, so don't feel like you've done anything wrong. Um, you know, you did as best you could, but you know, it's very hard to, it's very hard to find something after it's been found or to hide something after it's been found. Up there. Let's now dream. Put 
other way around, right? Yeah. Let's stream those two together. And while we're doing that, we also then talk to Isabeth and say, Isabeth, it's time for you to step up for the cult. We believe that the detective that knows about before has some evidence, and I'd like you to make that S evidence disappear. And on that note, that is where we're going to end for this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed. Hope you're keeping safe right there. And hope to see you next time. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button there on the right. Or checking out some other videos here on the left. Or perhaps you might even share with some friends.